What happened to marmalade? In 1961, teenagers William Jr. Campbell and Patrick Fairley met on Campbell's 14th birthday and discovered their mutual love for rock and roll music. They formed a band with bassist Billy Johnson and drummer Tommy Frew, calling themselves the Gaylords. They played at local clubs with little pay until singer Tommy McCallies, who later adopted the stage name Dean Ford, joined the group, leading them to be known as Dean Ford and the Gaylords. During the early 1960s, when Liverpool bands were gaining attention, Scottish rock and rollers faced challenges in getting noticed by record company executives. Despite being successful in Scotland, Dean Ford and the Gaylord struggled to secure a recording contract. However, in early 1964, they signed with EMI Columbia and released their debut record, 20 Miles, which performed well in Scotland but didn't chart in England. Their success remained limited to Scotland, where they supported English acts like the Hollies and made regular appearances on BBC Radio Scotland. Despite being a top band in Scotland based on music poll results, breaking into the English music scene proved difficult. They eventually moved to Wimbledon, London, and they struggled to make an impact. They faced lineup changes with Bill Irving being replaced by Graham Knight on bass. And after recording a fourth single, the end of their EMI contract came. Fortunately, the Tremolos, an English band with hit singles, admired the Gaylord sound and introduced them to their manager, Peter Walsh. Under Walsh's management, they changed their name to Marmalade, and with bookings at London's Marquee Club, their popularity grew. Walsh also secured them a recording contract with CBS Records, and they released several singles. Although some of their songs gained regional success in the U.S., they faced challenges in the U.K. charts. In early 1968, Marmalade decided to take a more commercial approach and release the pop rock song Loving Things, which became a breakthrough hit, reaching the U.K. Top 10. This success brought some relief to the band and boosted their confidence. Unfortunately, they had also opened an artistic Pandora's box. Having gone the commercial route, they now found the record company insisting that they stick with it. Songs they didn't care for were foisted on them for follow-up singles, and they got too little time to record their debut LP entitled There's a Lot of It About. In late 1968, Marmalade's single version of Obla D Obla Da, a Beatles song offered to them by publisher Dick James, unexpectedly became a number one hit in England and achieved global success with millions of copies sold. Despite this success, the song didn't align with the band's true musical style, which was more influenced by American soul, folk rock, and a progressive rock. They had unintentionally been branded as a soft, bubblegum-type pop rock band. Following their chart-topping record, the band decided to part ways with their label. Although CBS wanted to retain them, their manager saw an opportunity to negotiate more favorable terms given their hit track success. English Decca, a label with prestigious bands like the Moody Blues and Small Faces, and in the process of losing the Rolling Stones, outbid CBS with both better financial terms and artistic freedom. After almost a year of inactivity, Marmalade returned in the winter of 1969 with Reflections of My Life, an original song by Campbell and Ford. This daring composition incorporated elements of pop rock and harder progressive music, showcasing superb guitar work. The song topped the English charts in January 1970 and also became a successful top 10 single in the U.S., they followed up with the equally appealing but less successful track, Rainbow, which charted in both England and America. Following their two hits, Marmalade released the LP Reflections of the Marmalade, which didn't perform as well as expected due to its diverse range of sounds. The album featured soulful rockers, harmony-dominated progressive-sounding tracks, and covers of singer-songwriter-type songs. 
Although the LP failed to find an audience in England, it gained popularity in America under the title Reflections of My Life, reaching number 71 on the charts. The band had an opportunity to open for Three Dog Night on a tour in America, but their manager turned it down, missing a chance to showcase their full musical range to a vast audience who mostly knew them for their one major hit. By 1970, internal tensions started to arise within the band, marking the first significant signs of stress since its formation. While they received a substantial advance from the label and achieved success with their initial singles, the pressure to replicate their success mounted when the group was at a less cohesive phase. The band members were eager to explore different musical directions leading to strains within the lineup. In the midst of this, Junior Campbell, who had arranged the reflections of the Marmalade album and contributed to follow-up singles, decided to leave the band and pursue studies at the Royal College of Music. The group went inactive for several months until they recruited Hugh Nicholson, a former member of their rivals from Scotland, the Poets. Nicholson's arrival brought a new era for the band, with original songs and a heavier musical approach. An odd fact is that Campbell continued to write arrangements for the band despite his abrupt departure. This shift in dynamics led to Dean Ford being sidelined, as Nicholson insisted on taking lead vocals for certain songs and drummer Whitehead, who had been with the group for five years, was replaced by one of Nicholson's ex-bandmates, Dougie Henderson. The change in drummers had a significant impact on Marmalade's sound, shifting them from a progressive pop rock style to a more straightforward harder rock and roll band. Their album songs represented a blend of old and new sounds. By the spring of 1972, the band was reduced to a quartet as co-founder Pat Fairley chose to step back from performing, handling publicity and publishing instead. An article in the sensationalist UK tabloid News of the World focusing on Whitehead's wild activities as a band member surprisingly boosted Marmalade's commercial success, leading them to a number 6 British single with Redancer in the spring of 1972. However, just as things seemed to be turning in their favor, Nicholson left Marmalade. The remaining trio, Graham Knight, Ford, and Doogie Henderson, departed from DECA and signed with EMI, adding Mike Jap to fill Nicholson's position. Despite their attempts to reinvent themselves as a hard rock boogie band similar to Status Quo, the lineup changes took a toll, and the door seemed open for more departures. Knight was the first to leave, leaving Marmalade with little remaining beyond Ford. Their history took an unexpected twist as Ford decided to drop the band's classic hits from their set, focusing solely on their recent heavier material to reinvent Marmalade. However, audiences were not receptive to this change and expected to hear their old hits at shows but got none. Meanwhile, the group's former manager, Peter Walsh, saw the potential in the original members and formed Vintage Marmalade, featuring Whitehead and Knight along with Sandy Newman and Charlie Smith. They performed exclusively old Marmalade songs. Eventually, Ford and the band abandoned their reinvention efforts and Knight's group reclaimed the original name. Ford pursued a solo career, relocating to Los Angeles and dividing his time between music and driving a limousine for other stars. Unfortunately, he passed away on New Year's Day of 2019. Meanwhile, the new Marmalade, consisting of the original members, secured a recording contract in the mid-1970s and made a comeback on the English Top 10 in 1977 with falling apart at the seams. In 1980, Charlie Smith returned as the drummer and Alan Holmes replaced Withington and Marmalade. They released a US-only album called Marmalade, featuring re-recorded mixes of their previous material and some tracks by Junior Campbell. In 1982, they released another album titled Heartbreaker in the UK, but it wasn't very successful. 
Over the years, the band went through several lineup changes, with Graham Knight remaining as the only original member. Dave D made guest appearances and recorded a single with the band. In 2010, Knight and the drummer Taylor departed and new members Damon Sawyer and Mike Steed joined. Later, John James Newman became part of the band, making it a quintet once again. In 2013, the current lineup released their first studio album since 1979 called Penultimate, including new compositions and re-recordings of their previous songs. In 2015, the rhythm section was replaced by Jan Robinson and Chris North. In 2011, a double album titled Fine Cuts The Best of Marmalade was released, contain all of their original studio recordings from 1966 to 1972. Fairley moved to Los Angeles, worked in music publishing, and later retired. He passed away in 2020. Whitehead is still involved in artist management and appears on a TV program called Rock and Roll Cars. Knight has retired and resides in Spain. Campbell had a successful solo career and oversees the master rights to the band's recordings on their behalf, and he retains ownership of their publishing rights. And that's what happened to Marmalade. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and give me some facts about this band I failed to mention, and let me know who I should do next on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.